Do you fear death? No. Are you a former theater kid who's obsessed with tarot cards and old horror movies with sexy witches? Possibly. Do you want to dance through the night and sing like a horny ghost? Oh yeah! Then set up your haunted house way out of season and grab your maximum hold hairspray. Cause we wanna rock to death like a... Death Rock. Oh, oh, that's a good genre name! Death Rock. We're making death. Death Rock is a rock subgenre that stems from the American West Coast punk rock scene and the British post-punk and Batcave scene from the early 80s. The genre takes elements from classic rock and roll, punk rock, and shock rock, and can be characterized by its theatrical wailing vocals, atmospheric reverb guitars, and its raw, sexy, androgynous style. Mm. It fuses the rawness of punk with the more romantic, sexual, and emotional elements from goth rock. The genre can also be classified as a sibling genre of horror punk and psychobilly. Finally, death metal! Ugh, just because it has death in a name does not mean it has anything to do with death metal. That's right, Cookie Monster. Go home and cry about it. <laughs> Bitches! The term death rock can be traced back as early as the 1950s when it was used to describe a thematic style of rock and roll, typically songs about dead teenagers and cheerful stuff like that. Trace her footsteps down to the shore. Phrase she's gone forevermore. I love to see. Some of these early death rock bands even used elements from 50s rockabilly and rhythm and blues, both thematically and musically. But unlike Bela Lugosi, the genre is not dead yet. Cause death rock has a bit of a revival after 2011 with a plethora of new bands crawling out of their graves. But just like the strange mutations from the tomb of punk rock, the gothics are coming out of the undergrowth to play their death rock. Well, that's where I parked. Band name! Making something spooky or sexy or just a random cluster of words. Maybe throw some numbers in there too. It's very chaotic and random. It's like most of these bands got their name from a Luigi board. Oh my god! Dude! Dude! Fuck! Dear spirit, we call out to you. Help us name our band. Damn it! We got ghosted again. Ah, uh, steady! Cause you want to look like death. Rock. Death rock is a very visual genre with its own distinct style, which is basically too goth to be punk and too punk to be goth. If that makes sense. The fashion emerged from the club kids scene in the 80s. Visual reference include Kiss, Cooper, Bowie, and Screaming Jay Hawkins. The fashion is to die for, very DIY based. The main theme for your outfit is layering black on black with all the ripped fishnet from the pro base fishing pyramid. Got a hole in your stocking? Great. Now rip a few more holes and wear it until it almost falls apart and you're ready to go on stage. Chain, spikes, and BDSM gear makes for a great accessory. Oh, and also, boots! Can't make death rock without your golf stompers. Some chunky platforms, thigh-high stilettos, pikes, or whatever hurt your feet enough to add your pain when you sing. These boots were not made for walking. For hair, the most iconic, of course, is the Death Hawk. Big teased hair in general works too. Makeup is also a big part of the look. Essentially, you want to look like Beetlejuice if he was a drag queen. It's showtime, bitches! For the lyrics, with a name like, you know, Death Rock, it probably surprises no one that the songs in this genre tends to be about, you know, dark emotions. Occultism. Sexy stuff. Descriptions of horror movies. Lesbian vampires from outer space. And of course, death. So when writing lyrics, it's up to you whether you're feeling sad, horny, or just love creepy stuff in general. Other things to note though is that the vocals tend to be placed a bit further back in the mix, thus making a singer more part of the soundscape. Perfect for dancing in the graveyard or at your local goth club. But now that we learn that we all deserve to be dead, it's time to record in front of the door. Shall we? 
Set the BPM to a desired steady rock groove, so anywhere between 110 and 140 works well. Drums are usually very simple, with only a basic dry with easy beat. It's the kind of music goth kids dance to in the middle of the night, so keep it simple and dancey. Overuse hi-hat and ride, it's as simple as snare on 2 and 4. Also I noticed while looking for reference songs that a lot of death rock songs tune down their snare. It sounds like it's somewhere between a regular snare and a light tom. So maybe pitch down your snare a little bit to give it that death rock feel. Guitars can either sound like a broken speaker with fuzz or have a heavily distorted tone. Kinda like black metal with a bit more effort. You spend less time on layering on fishnets and more time layering on guitar tracks. For lead guitars, if you want to add some very haunting, chromatic, spicy solos, or just have a, you know, a basic lead guitar. Then just crank out with a lot of delay and reverb. But most importantly, CHORUS PEDAL! Crank the settings up very high so it sounds like a drowned out speaker with a warbly effect. Basically when it goes or like that, then you're doing it right. Mmm, bass. Just like post-punk, the bass has a bigger role by focusing more on the drive. Even gets its own space to shine from time to time. So while the bass plays alone, the rest of the band can wave around like dead sad trees. Can you sit and do this? Then you're doing it right. Vocals. Step one. Spooky. Step two. Honey. Step three combined. Spooky and honey. Bring your inner goth mommy and start wailing your sound out for the children of the night. The ghoul next door leaves you wanting more. Now it would be fun for Annalena to just do the vocals all by herself, but to really amp up the song, we summoned our shiny friend Floyd, lead singer of the Norwegian death rock band Bethphoner. Her head starts spinning and then you're dead! Now for mixing, you could mix it yourself, but even though we go super hard on DIY aesthetic, I got someone else to mix it. Because even though I like to go as hard as I can in these genres, I'm also a hypocrite. Now the album cover in this genre has a lot of crossbones, bats, spider webs, sexy ladies, old horror poster vibes, artsy fartsy colors, a lot of black and red, spooky scary skeletons, occult chic, and even more bones. As long as the album has black somewhere, the lack of color is the best color. Now before you press enter, you just have to beware. Beware of the widow that lives next to your doorstep. She brings a lot of men in, yet none of them come out. She has invited you to dinner, a lovely feast of meat on bone. Careful now, don't let her pull your heartstring, cause you might be next. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how to drink, sorry. <laughs> Music.
Speculation! You're a bunch of dirty, dramatic theater kids who got kicked out of the haunted house for making too much noise. The Dark Gods are very proud of you. Now go into the night with all your ghoul friends and have a happy eternal Halloween. But it's not October. <laughs> Stupid. Every day is Halloween! You're right! Yay! The end. You might be next. <laughs> oh, that's expired. <laughs>